this one is going to be a little bit bitchy so if you do not like it uh, click away now and listen to something else okay this was not necessarily oh no it does have a question in there but the email came like this I have a problem with my mother-in-law it disturbs me that she is alive how can I handle this even though I have finished with her my mother-in-law is permanently dictating my husband's life okay something here does not make sense because you say even though I have finished with her if you had finished with her she would not be a problem so you have not finished with her at all now let's explain a few things first so that you might no excuse me let's explain a few things that might help you understand some other things something I learned from a healing method a very good healing method called family constellation a mother is and will always be a man's first woman and any time a wife tries to come between or tries to break this up the marriage does not last your problem is not so much your mother-in-law your problem is that you come second I'm really sorry to tell you this but this is never going to change never 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 you will always be second to your husband even if your mother-in-law is not alive alive so I would say deal with this issue and you can deal with it by simply asking yourself why do I have have the need to be first now before you answer think first because I know you're probably going to answer a wife should always be first you know what honey you've been trying for thousands of years and you still haven't managed it you were born what 40 years ago think for a minute life on earth did not begin with you it existed long before you now sit down somewhere quietly and ask yourself why do I have the need to be my husband's first or to be number one in the beginning you will get angry because you cannot let go of the notion that you're not number one you just can't all these Hollywood movies have convinced you that you are number one in most cases you're actually number three because if you found a real man he is number one his mother is number two and you are number three and if you have found a businessman you're actually number four and then after you have children you become number five so instead of suffering all your life and then getting breast cancer and then dying sit down somewhere quietly and keep asking yourself why do I have the need to be number one I can give you the answer the answer is very easy but you need to come to a point where you understand it not simply know it where you actually feel it I'm going to use a cliche here to know something is knowledge to have experienced it becomes wisdom and this is where you need to reach you need to feel the answer I'll give you the answer right now 
if you have not already guessed it. You have the need to be number one because you have never made yourself number one. Never, never, ever. Do not lie to yourself. Because if you had made yourself number one, even for a mere 60 seconds, you would know what it feels like. You would know the power this gives you. And you would never go back. So if you are in this situation, you have never made yourself number one. So you demand for someone else to make you number one. You do have the right to continue demanding this. But let me ask you this question. What will, do you think you will accomplish? Absolutely nothing. Others have tried before. And they also accomplished absolutely nothing. They just become bitter and, I'm sorry to say this, but ugly. Because whatever is on the inside, baby, eventually comes out. So again, always keep asking yourself until you finally get it. You might not get it the first time. It's okay, you'll get it the second, the third, or maybe even the third hundredth time. There's no rush. But let me tell you, it is worth it. Now, my mother-in-law is permanent permanently dictating my husband's life. Okay, the problem here is not that your mother-in-law is dictating your husband's life. The problem here for you is that you are not dictating your husband's life. Because you would have no problem whatsoever if you were dictating his life. But you don't want someone else to dictate his life. So again, ask yourself, why do I have a need to dictate someone else's life? Why don't I just focus on my life? You see, you are unnecessarily unhappy. And you think the source, or no, excuse me, you don't think, you have convinced yourself that the source of your unhappiness is your mother-in-law. But it isn't. Your mother-in-law might drop dead tomorrow you will still not be happy. You will then find something else to bitch about. So, find you. Now, the fact that it disturbs you that someone is alive, like your mother-in-law, that really is not a problem, really. I mean, half the people on the planet disturb me because they are alive, but I have a very nice existence and I'm very happy. So that's not the problem. That doesn't matter. And don't keep telling yourself you have finished with her. There's no way you could have finished with her and then she still bothers you. When we are finished with someone, they never cross our mind anymore. That's it. It's done. It's gone. They might even be in the same house. They just don't bother us. Now, that was for you. But let me tell you what you yourself will do if you have a son and your son has a girlfriend one day or a wife. You will do exactly the same. Why? Because you see, for a woman, a son is not a son. It is a second husband. Whatever your husband is not giving you now, the emotional support that you want, you will train your son to give to you. So then when another woman comes, it's exactly like another woman coming into your marriage. You might say, this sounds sick. Hey, 
we are on earth and we are playing some sick games now this has to do with male female energy you see your son as male energy and since he's still a baby and you know you can mold him and train him to become exactly what you want him to become you will do this and then when another woman comes you feel like she's taking your man away and in a way she is so again the problem is you ask yourself why do you not like yourself enough that you need other people to behave a certain way to fulfill you that you need emotional support from others I know many women are gonna find 100 excuses about this and I keep seeing all these phrases on the internet all these memes of what a real man is you can continue creating these if you like but you know what baby you're getting old you're not becoming more beautiful you're not becoming lovable because you become bitter and when someone is bitter man or woman they are simply not lovable and your life is over all because you do not accept what is learn to accept what is it is liberating and then you can say this is how I would like to live or for right now I'll live like this and let me see in a few months or in a few years I might make a different choice so apart from the fact that you do not like yourself you do not accept what is it is very important if you want to be happy to accept what is and what is is that no one if you lived on earth a billion years no soul has come here with the purpose of loving you so how many more lifetimes would you be willing to waste understand this now that no soul has come here for you and then you will literally fly you will go into the center into the core of your soul and from then on not a single day will go by where you are not happy simply because you have found yourself and then you will simply start to slowly express yourself as for right now you are a useless piece of shit useless to mother earth useless to civilization useless to humanity in most cases useless to the economy because if you do not express yourself you're just a robot you know what we have robots we need your ideas but you cannot bring out your ideas because 99.9% .9 of your thought goes towards someone else so you are not use uh, you are not you are of no use and as we go into the next dimension the energy of that dimension will simply get rid of the people that are of no use 
and you will go back home and you will look back at the opportunities that earth gives a soul and you will say I missed out on the greatest opportunity that has ever existed in the entire history of the universe. Why? Because I could not accept what is. This is why. I keep saying love yourself, but you know what? First accept what is, and then it will, it will be much easier to start loving yourself after that. Because once you accept what is, it, it, it then becomes common sense to start loving yourself. It's like, yes, of course. So if you find it too difficult to start loving yourself, start first accepting what is without devoting your entire life to changing it. I will leave it at this. <laughs>